Recovery is typically viewed as recovering from the work we've already done, so letting our sore muscles rest and heal. But recovery can actually be used as a day to set ourselves up in preparation for what's to come. So today I'm gonna to give you six things that's gonna step up your recovery game and take it to the next level. The first and one of my absolute favorite things to do on a recovery, recovery day is steady state cardio. When I say steady state cardio, I'm not talking about heavy breathing. We shouldn't be panting like a dog. We should be able to have a conversation while we're doing it. A really good indicator is gonna be that we don't even start sweating until we're hitting that 10 or 12 minute mark into that steady state cardio, meaning that our heart rate is saying no higher than zone two. We're just getting some really good fresh blood flow to our sore muscles and allowing our mind go into that moving meditation. Another good gauge is gonna be focusing on nose breathing. So making sure that we can keep our mouth closed, breathing in through our nose and out through our nose the entire time doing this steady state cardio. I think that a lot of people think, oh, it's my rest day, I don't have to move, I don't wanna do anything. Maybe if we're training super, super hard, we need that full rest day, but a lot of times, 30 to 40 minutes of the steady state cardio can go a really long way with just clearing our mind, getting some fresh blood flow, and working out some of the soreness so we're ready to hit the gym hard and we're prepared for the next Day. The next re recovery tool is the ice bath. It's a love-hate relationship, but it can reduce inflammation, release cold shock proteins, will absolutely work on your mental toughness, and when you get out, you also get quite the endorphin rush. Nowadays, you can actually find ice baths fairly cheap and pretty accessibly. We've got hours on Craigslist, believe it or not, maybe a year ago. You can also get ice buckets now. I think they're kind of like a whiskey barrel that's made out of plastic that are pretty inexpensive. If it's not something you want to have at your house or maybe you live in an apartment, things that are also accessible are cryotherapy. Those are popping up everywhere and it's also a unique experience. You've got the tubes that you actually stand in as well as the full chambers that you go inside of. Whether you've got access to one of these or not, something everybody can do is just take a cold shower. If that's the approach you're gonna take, about five minutes or so. It's not the easiest thing to make yourself do, but again, that mental toughness plays in and it is something that's refreshing and there's an endorphin rush when you get back out. Another recovery tool you can implement into your routine is the sauna. This is probably my favorite out of all of them. I do this at least four to five times a week. I typically try to stay in the sauna for 15 up to 30 minutes depending. The sauna is really great because you get really good cardiovascular benefits from it because as we sit in this increased temperature, our heart rate slowly starts to rise. It's at a steady state and it's elevated when we are not doing work. So we get these added benefits from that steady state heart rate and sweating feeling good while we sit in the sauna. It can also be meditative and challenge our mental toughness because when you're sitting in something that's 175 degrees Fahrenheit, it's uncomfortable. So it's a really good way to practice focusing on what you can control and working on your breathing. Saunas have always been one of my favorite recovery tools and in Finland, they're a, a common practice. I think most houses just have them built in. And about a year ago, I put this one in our house. And I'll actually link a video for you guys in the description showing you guys how I did this because it really wasn't that big of a project. You can also get barrel saunas that people put outside and we considered that as well. But for me, it seemed a little bit easier and more convenient to have it put in our basement. Outside of just recovery from fitness, saunas have been linked to a reducing all cause mortality when used on a regular basis, which is kind of crazy. And it seems like the trend is moving more over the US as well, though widely adopted in other places in the world. And we understand that not everybody's got either the space or the resources to put a full sauna inside their house, but some other options that you could take advantage of would be either a portable infrared sauna, which are, are a little bit smaller that I know you can set up in, inside your house that doesn't take up a whole lot of room. Something else that you could look into is some YMCAs or local rec centers that maybe have cheap memberships or day passes to have access to just the sauna and maybe some of the other amenities that you don't need a full membership to a fancy gym or a club to be able to take advantage of. So food is a really important recovery tool. And I think a lot of times on rest days, people don't maybe look at it the way that they should. People feel that when they're not working out or they're not having a hard exercise day, that they should cut their calories back. Even though it may not be as strenuous of a workout day, you should continue eating the same amount of calories. So not limiting yourself and digging yourself in a hole calorically is gonna set you up for success the next day. Nutrition on recovery days is something I am super passionate about. I think it's really important, like Patrick said, make sure you're not cutting your calories because like we talked about, we wanna make sure we are recovering from the work that we've done and the soreness that we're feeling, but also setting ourselves up and preparing ourselves for the next day. So we need to be fueled so we have glycogen store stored up so we can hit our workout hard the day after recovery. One thing you wanna make sure you think about and plan ahead for is that you're not gonna be having your protein shake most likely on that recovery day. So starting right when you wake up, 
up within 30 minutes getting your first meal in and then focusing on protein throughout the day to make sure we're getting good clean sources chicken breast fish whatever that may be for you throughout the day I like to focus on eating smaller meals and the other thing I would tell you is if you're hungry or on a recovery day, that's actually okay. A lot of times on my recovery days, I am way hungrier than I am on my training days and that's because I'm actually having time and my nervous system is slowing down to where I can process and I can get the food in. Where when I'm in the gym training all day, sometimes I'm living off of liquid carbs and my body just isn't hungry. So all I can tell you is on this day, make sure that you listen to your body and if you need more fuel, don't restrict your yourself but make sure you give it to yourself and that's gonna set you up for a better following day another recovery practice that can make a huge difference is gonna be stretching and mobilizing I rely on my GoWad app for this so it leads me through the stretches that I need based upon my weaknesses and where I am a little bit tighter maybe a little bit less mobile so I spend extra time on recovery days maybe during training I'll spend 10 to 12 minutes warming up and cooling down on a recovery day, I'm spending 40 minutes plus. This is a really great time to just kind of work through your entire body. So we're not only targeting one area, we're targeting everything. We're taking that extra time to make sure we're giving our body the TLC it deserves after all of the work that we put in throughout the week. Last and certainly not least is going to be sleep. Sleep is arguably the most important out of anything that we've talked about this entire video. Sleep is going to help us recover. It's going to help our muscles grow and it's going to help us recharge our batteries. So that we're ready and we can tax our CNS the following day. If we're not getting the appropriate amount of sleep, we're just gonna keep digging ourselves in a hole after a hole. And we're gonna dig ourselves deeper and deeper and we're just gonna feel fatigued all of the time. When it comes to sleep, it's super important to regulate your temperature at night, which is why my new favorite thing is my eight sleep, because I can set my temperature, and especially when I'm training hard, I tend to get really hot at night. So I can set it for cooler when I'm in my deep sleep. That way it helps me stay asleep and I don't wake up hot. And I can also check in the morning what my HRV is and what my resting heart rate is. So on the eight sleep app, I can see those things each night. And if all of a sudden I notice my resting heart rate has normally been 44 to 46, which it usually is if it jumps all the way up to 50 plus I know I'm fatigued I know I'm tired and I might be adjusting my training the following day and in all likelihood the harder you're working out the more sleep you're gonna need for me when I'm training super hard I need about 9 to 10 hours of sleep even up to 11 when I'm not training quite as hard and I'm in off season I can make do with about seven and a half to eight hours but we should always be aiming for seven plus hours of sleep at night to make sure our body is fully recovered and it's also gonna lead to improved brain function as well some other small things that you can do that might make a huge difference is gonna be closing the blinds at night and getting blackout shades. When it comes to the little lights on your TV or the charger, you might think that doesn't wake me up. What are you talking about? Well, if you can get used to sleeping without those and then all of a sudden you're in a room or in a hotel where you can't turn those off, you're gonna feel like someone's shining a flashlight in your face and keeping you up all night. So if you are gonna be traveling often and it's harder when you're in a hotel to get every single light. I've literally been in a hotel and I'm hanging t-shirts all over my room trying to get those lights to go away. You could also invest in a sleep mask. I sleep in one every single night. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it does really help because then you can have that controlled environment wherever you go because that sleep mask takes away all of those lights. We hope this video was super helpful. These are six things that you can start implementing to your routine that are going to immediately take your workouts to the next level. A lot of times we're working out really hard. We're so focused on how hard we're training in the gym. We never miss our workouts but we don't put a whole lot of thought into our recovery. And without putting that thought into the recovery, we're just sabotaging what we're doing in the gym. We have to almost recover as hard as we're working to get the best results and to continue growing and achieving those goals that we set for ourselves. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything we talked about, please drop those in the comments. We'll definitely put the link to the eight sleep because that's my new favorite thing. And we will also put the link to the Sano video and the ice, ice tub, ice bath video that Patrick talked about showing you guys how we created both of those things. If that's something you want to implement or bring into your home as well. If you like the video, please don't forget, smash that like button, drop those comments below and have a great day. Stopping me. <laughs>